Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Sometimes confusion arises in reading Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics Book 5 when it comes to particular justice, that is, justice understood as a kind of fairness, as a kind of equality, because Aristotle will say at the beginning of the discussion, I, I, I'm going to talk about two different kinds of this, but then he goes on to talk about three. And, and he says very explicitly that what he's calling reciprocity, and we'll come back to that in a minute, differs from justice in distribution and in, in rectification. Quite often it will arrive at something different than um, distribution or rectification would. And why is that? Well, at its core, the, the term that he's using to antipetponthos in Greek means something like suffering in return. Um, the anti in return, in exchange, uh, and also to a certain extent against. Peponthos is coming from the, the verb, which means to suffer, to experience, to undergo, to have done to one. And so, you know, we can think of this as sort of getting what it is that you've given. When we talk about somebody who is able to dish it out but not, you know, take it back in return, like with respect to insults or sarcasm or something like that, we're saying that there's a lack of reciprocity and that it's okay if somebody's sarcastic to you to be sarcastic to them because if they can dish it out, then they can take it. That's saying that there should be reciprocity there. Now, reciprocity could be in terms of good things, or it could be in terms of bad things. The examples that Aristotle used are not covering the entire gamut of possibility. We can think about friendship and relationships as being governed by something like reciprocity rather than commutative or, or rectificatory, rectificatory justice much of the time, in part because friends are supposed to be you know, giving uh, and, and taking more or less equally from each other. Even if one friend is a better person than the other, you know, there's a sort of equality of, of give and take. Um, the examples that Aristotle uses that are, that are negative or bad or, or things like that, where we have to do with bad actions, would be things like where we say the punishment fits the crime. So he brings up the judge Redmanthos, this legendary judge in the underworld, who said that, look, if you're a really bad guy, and pretty much everybody in the underworld who's going before Redmanthos is going to be a bad guy, um, you should suffer what you've inflicted on other people. And I suppose if you have eternity to make people suffer, that's quite possible. So, you know, if you look at some of the, the, the uh, sufferings of some of the ancient Greek villains, not the heroes, but the villains, um, some of these would be examples of that. Um, when we talk about having the punishment fit the crime now, or poetic justice, like somebody who punches people in the face a lot, um, you know, they, they're for no provocation whatsoever, somebody comes up to them and punches them, and then we're all like, yeah, you finally got what you deserved. Or somebody who cheats on their spouse, um, their spouse cheats on them, and then people, you know, they complain to their friends, and their friends are like, hey, dummy, you cheated on your spouse, why shouldn't they cheat on you? That's this conception of reciprocity, of justice as reciprocity. Aristotle specifies that not every case where somebody is getting 
what it is that they gave to somebody else is necessarily reciprocity. So here's one example that he gives. The officer who strikes a person because it's part of their duty shouldn't be struck by them in, in return. So, you know, back in, in the ancient time, they used corporal punishment. You'd actually done something wrong. You deserved a flogging. Uh, you don't get to turn around to the officer and then pick up the stick and flog them and say, ah, ha, ha, you know, not just how do you like it, but this is just, this is restoring it. Because you're getting flogged in the first place because you did something wrong. It's part of rectificatory justice. Or, or perhaps, you know, um, if you're a flogger, I suppose. So there are some cases where Aristotle thinks that if you're pursuing reciprocity, you will actually do things that are, that are unjust. But in many cases, it actually is a, a third kind of particular justice, Aristotle thinks. It, it, you know, it, it might actually be at, at odds with rectificatory justice. Um, the idea that a rapist deserves to be raped in turn would be an example of reciprocity rather than rectificatory justice. The, the idea that um, of blood feud, that somebody kills one of your relatives, now you kill one of their relatives, um, that would be you know, a similar type of thing. Somebody embarrasses you, you get to embarrass them in a similar situation. Um, all of those would be examples of reciprocity with respect to bad or harmful actions. Aristotle also talks about reciprocity in terms of something else. He talks about it in terms of economic exchange. This is something interesting to think about. He's not talking about friendship here. He's talking about, I give you, you know, the shoes that I produce, so you give me a bed. And I give you five pairs of shoes, so you give me a bed in return. There has to be some sort of proportionality that people can more or less agree upon. I give you 12 bottles of beer, you give me three heads of cabbage. You say, no, I think it actually deserves two heads of cabbage, and then we start haggling back and forth. That haggling is trying to figure out what the proportion ought to be, you know. The haggling could be, ah, your cabbage doesn't look that good, you know. I'll take three of your heads because two wouldn't be enough because your heads are kind of small. Or, you know, the top leaves are kind of damaged, I'll have to peel those off. And, well, your beer is a little bit stale, you know. They, people go back and forth. I don't, I'm not really a drinker. Um, in any case, they're trying to find the proportion between them. Aristotle says something very interesting here. And this is sort of a, a tangent but it does fit in with these discussions of justice. He says, this is where money came from. Money allows us not only to be able to exchange things back and forth, it provides a kind of fluidity uh, by being something that is not going to rot, like beer or cabbages or even shoes or, or beds. Or, or, you know, beds are not very convenient to carry around to, to exchange with other people. So money has value because it facilitates proportional exchange between people who are providing goods and services to each other. He says it's kind of like a promise, a promise that we can, we can trust in that will allow us to exchange things more broadly. So, I mean, if, if I'm a, a shoemaker and <laughs> I get a whole bag of shoes along, it's a lot more convenient to have a wallet full of, you know, whatever, bronze coins. Um, shoes are not, you know, unless I'm a high-end shoemaker, I'm not going to have silver or gold coins. It's a lot more convenient if I need to go to the grocer and I need to go to the bed maker and I need to go to uh, the salt, you know, salt seller. Uh, and I want to hit the theater on the way out. These allow us to exchange things back and forth. Now that exchange, Aristotle thinks, is part of reciprocity. It is governed by this sense of what is actually fair, what is actually equal. So it can be equal in the sense of, look, you hurt me, I hurt you in return. Or it can be equal in the sense of there's some sort of proportion of the goods I give you, you should give me a, a similar proportion back, or perhaps that guy over there should as well. 